election, the U.S. House of Representatives passed the Renesa Act, calling for tougher sanctions on the regime. The Florida Republican Congresswoman Maria Elvira Salazar was one of the sponsors of that legislation, and she is joining me now from Tampa, Florida. Congresswoman, welcome to the program, and we are going to get to Nicaragua, but because of our talk and our, you know, important focus on climate, I want to ask you about the bipartisan infrastructure bill that was just passed by the House of by, by, by Congress, Biden's uh, bill. It's obviously watered down, but you did not vote for it. Why not? Well, thank you for the opportunity. And before I answer your question, I just wanted to thank you very, thank you very much for inviting me to your show. When I was a news reporter like you were, you were one of the models, and I am privileged to be able to talk to you. I always looked up to you, and you are one of the solid ones in this industry. So I commend you for that. And now let me explain to you why I voted against it. Because that, that immigration bill has been a trade-off for the Democrats be, between infrastructure and socialism. They're saying that they want to transform this country, that this is going to be a transformational bill. And indeed, they are going to transform the United States. And that founding spirit that created the United States is going to be shot. And that is the reason why I voted against this bill, because there has been a trade-off between infrastructure and socialism, and I cannot allow that. Number two, oh, well. even more importantly, that bill, half of the bill, or 25 percent, I should say, is going to be paid by the debt, is not covered. Number three, half of the bill is only going, only half of the bill is going to what you and I know as traditional infrastructure. The rest is very questionable. That bill at this moment does not resolve the number one problem the average American family is facing, inflation, higher eggs, higher milk, higher gas prices. So what we need to do is Look for the money that's available. Florida has $6 billion in the, United, in the Treasury in Tallahassee. We could be using that money for transforming, for, for infrastructure. But the problem is, is not so much the reconciliation bill that is coming up next, according to Nancy Pelosi, or the infrastructure. What we're seeing here is that the, Democrat, the Democratic Party is trying to transform the founding spirit of the United States. Okay, can and I stop you there? incentive... Can, can I just stop you there? I mean, I'm hearing what you're saying, and you are portraying some really urgent um, needs in the country, such as infrastructure, such as even helping, you know, your own district in Florida, um, as a fundamental effort to, to transform the whole idea of the United States. The truth is that when we hear us over here in Europe, the word socialism coming out of the United States, we just throw up our, our hands because it's so far from that that, it's, um, that it's, it's just a slogan. What I want to ask you then, because of what we've been discussing, is do you not believe that climate, the crisis, affects your district and your part of, uh, of the world? Are you not concerned about that? I am very concerned, and I have one of the longest coasts in the state of Florida, District 27. Yeah. I have Biscayne Bay, but I'm not discussing that. Obviously, that we have to take care of the sea level rising and the climate change. Absolutely. But when you say that socialism is a slogan, I, am, I come from a district that has felt socialism on their skin. Socialism is a nefarious ideology, and unfortunately, according to my view and to my, and to my constituents and my voters, socialism has penetrated the Democratic Party. And you're seeing it. They're radicals. They, they belong to an organization called the Democratic uh, Socialist Organization of America. And they are Marxists. And Marxism only means three okay. things, oppression, repression, and exile. Um, we're going to get to this uh, uh, regarding Nicaragua, but you know as well as I do, probably better than I do, because you're no longer a journalist, you're actually a congresswoman who can actually do things, and facts matter, congresswoman, that government spending is not socialism. But beyond that, let us just play what President Obama said about the climate crisis, which doesn't recognize the words socialism, Marxism, or even Democrat and Republican. It's about all of us, all of humanity. Here's what he said. It doesn't matter if you're a Republican or a Democrat, if your Florida house is flooded by rising seas. 
or your crops fail in the Dakotas, or your California house is burning down. Nature, physics, science do not care about party affiliation. So I guess I just want to, I mean, do you agree with that, that, that this is a physical, factual, scientific issue that doesn't care about parties or ideologies? And particularly when we're going to talk right now about Nicaragua, this pressure, among many others, of climate catastrophe is also causing people to come into the United States and, and mass migration movements. I am not questioning that climate change is something that we have to address. And I just told you, I'm in Florida 27. Biscayne Bay is part of my district. Mm -hmm. And I know that we have to take care of it and that we have to invest resources. And Miami Beach has a major problem with sea level rising and North Bay Village. I understand what you're telling me. But I do believe that you take care of that through other means, through conservative means. I'm not saying that you ignore it, absolutely. I understand that the fish are not Republicans, Democrats, or independent, that the fauna we need to preserve our natural resources. And Florida, tourism is the economy, economy is tourism, and the economy, tourism is climate change. I'm not, I, I don't disagree. What I'm saying is that when you ask me about infrastructure and about the reconciliation bill that is coming right after, all I'm saying is that those two bills are specifically the reconciliation bill that the Dems call the human infrastructure. What we're doing in reality is that we are changing the American psyche. We're changing the foundation, we're, we're, we're uh, corroding the founding spirit of this country, which is to wake up in the morning Morning, take risks, be responsible for your own actions, and not make God the government or make government God. That's what right. I'm saying. And when you tell okay. me about Nick, okay, so okay, let's go so to let's Nicaragua. Go to, <laughs> let's go to Nicaragua. Um, so the government, this administration, has called the election, which we said over the weekend, um, a sham pantomime election. Is the administration's um, response, and I will give you um, a bit of, well, I'll, give, I'll, I'll read some in a minute, but is the response enough? What are you looking for, having helped pass that legislation about election reform and the like in, uh, in, in Nicaragua? It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing what the, the State Department is doing in Central America. But not only in Nicaragua, in Venezuela, in Cuba, every, all over Latin America. And why do I say it's embarrassing? I have hundreds of thousands of Nicaraguans who live in District Number 27. I was the Central American Bureau Chief. While you were in the Middle East, I was covering the Reagan War between the Sandinistas and the Contras. I know the Nicaraguans very well. Could you imagine what it is that the whole political capital that President Ronald Reagan invested in Central America, specifically against the Sandinistas, that we are back in square one? That once again, Daniel Ortega, in, in, the, in the eyes of the State Department, stole not only last night's election, but stole the country. Seven of the presidential contenders are in a dungeon. They have been there for more than five months. How do I know? Because one of them, Arturo Cruz, was my first husband, one of the leaders of the Contra. How could you be in jail just because you're running as a pres presidential contender because you want democracy in your country? That's Daniel Ortega and the Sandinistas, but where is the State Department? Where is the beacon of hope, which is this country, the United States? They have been begging, beseeching, calling my office, saying, why don't you do something? So we passed the Renaissance Act. Thank God the President Biden is saying that he is going to sign it. And what is that going to be sending, Christiane? He's going to be sending the message to Ortega, late and pretty weak message, but nonetheless is there, that you cannot go to Paris or to Italy or to Miami and enjoy the fruits of what you stole from the national treasury. But still, we have not sent the message that the United States needs to be sending to that type of dictators in our backyard, that you cannot be stealing elections just like that in broad daylight. Let me ask you something that I touched on before, um, immigration. 
um, because clearly this all has an impact. The people who can't live under that regime in Nicaragua are going to want to leave it. Um, more than 100,000 yes. Nicaraguans are seeking refuge, as you know, primarily right now in Costa Rica, and many of them are likely to try to come to your country, to the United States. So should the U.S. welcome these Nicaraguans who are fleeing this repressive regime? What, what is your view on that? It's a very complicated topic, because if you are Nicaraguan, obviously I would pack up my kids and everything that I own, and I would come up north, because the gringos, the Yankees, are going to treat me a lot better than my own compatriots. So that's what's happening. But at the same time, we're in a situation where we cannot be allowing the whole world to come. So that's why I go back to Ronald Reagan. He had a right. He would, he would fight the Sandinistas with everything he had, diplomatically speaking. He was the guy who forced the Sandinistas to give elections in 1989, and that's why Violeta Barrios de Chamorro was able to win. So Reagan had a right. And then and second, let's, let's invite the American companies to go and set up shop in Central America, give tax breaks, tax incentives, whatever it takes. So let's not move sanctions. Jobs from China. Well, sanctions, we have sanctions, but you were asking me about the immigration reform. Yeah. And then that's another problem that we have okay. as Americans. We need to reform the immigration system that we have. It's in shambles. It's another right. embarrassment. But this is for the United States. It's okay. time after Reagan to... to uh, have an immigration reform law, and it, that's one of my next projects, but I would like you to. And I have one called the Dignity Act that I would like okay. to come to your show and, and explain to you what I think we should be doing as Republicans, Democrats, and Independents, and sit at the table, not try to squeeze this through reconciliation to see if the parliamentarian okay. will allow it to stick. No, it's All not right, responsible. Wish we had more time. Yeah. Congresswoman Salazar, thank you for joining us.